tell you what, the drama doesn't stop over in North Wales. <laughs> What a ball! Mullen right side of the box and space. Early ball in. Yeah! Yeah! Jar! The super sub does it again! Fletcher on his own up front. Turns. Looks for options. Works it wide. Good ball. Chance with the cross. Driven in the goal mouth. David! Do you know what? It was a ludicrous <laughs> result. Let's just remind you what happened. They were playing Salford mm. on Saturday. Salford went 2-0 up inside right the first 35 minutes, something like that. Uh, Wrexham did get a goal back just before half-time, but they then won the game with two late goals in the 88th and 89th minute. Quite Brilliant. incredible. Stephen Fletcher, as you just heard, was involved in both the goals. The former Scotland striker signed on a free transfer last month. Uh, he replaced another of Wrexham forwards on the day. That was Ollie Palmer, who himself has been in great form for the Red Dragons this season. And pleased to say, Ollie joins us now. Ollie, good morning. How are you? Hi, morning. Yeah, I'm very good. You? Yeah, we're all we're all well. Um, tell us. Uh, obviously, I mentioned there you you came off in that game before the late late win. So uh, were you going mad in the dugout? Yeah, it was um it was an unbelievable comeback to be honest. It's um something we've done at the race course many times. So I wasn't surprised at all. <laughs> um and I think, you know, we've probably given plenty of them moments to, you know, the fans and the owners, to be honest. Probably too many needed. <laughs> I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, some of the results over the weekend were brilliant, mm. but that was one of the standout ones for that comeback. Um, tell us how life is in Wrexham for you then, Ollie. Yeah, it's great. It's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a crazy start to the season. Um I think we took a bit of a thumping in, in the opening fixture against M- MK. And then um <clears throat> we kind of had to reset a little bit after our American tour. And then we kind of kicked on from there really. We've done quite well. I think recently, you know, we've had a few tough games. We played all playoff teams. Two of them games we've had men sent off. Um like you just said, there's always something going on uh, in a Wrexham game. So um, it made it a little bit tough for ourselves at times. But yeah, we're slowly, slowly starting to climb the table. Ollie, are the cameras on 24-7 at the cl- <laughs> the training ground, at the ground, everywhere you go? Are the cameras on you guys all the time, obviously, for the Welcome to Wrexham series? Uh, is that the way it is? It is and it isn't. They are there a lot. I wouldn't say 24-7, but I'd say they're there most days and they want to be involved with most of your life. Um, so, you know, little things. Like I went to Hope House Hospice um, the other day. They came and filmed there with me um, where I've taken on like a bit of an ambassador role. Um, they'll be in the changing room probably four training days out of five and they'll be at 90% of the game so yeah they are there a lot um but you get used to it they you know they become a bit of a fly on the wall um mm-hmm. they try not to get in your way but sometimes well I know a few people have turned around and just cracked their heads on one of the big cameras that are just around the corner so and the lads the, <laughs> Ollie the lads must have to watch what they're sort of saying what they're joking about what they're doing and be I mean because you know, when the cameras are rolling and there's a microphone about, you never know where it ends up. You know, yeah, just... maybe, a, maybe a joke's gone too far and someone's saying, shh, shh, shh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, obviously you've got to be careful. Um, sometimes, obviously, lads are often mic'd up in training and then you'll give, you know, a little sign to say to the lads, a yeah. little tap on the chest, uh, lads, I'm like, <laughs> so be careful what you say. Um, so... Yeah, no, it is a little bit like that. Obviously, you don't want to get anyone in trouble or anything like no. that. But um, it's, you know, generally speaking, it's not there to stitch anyone up. It's there to show that, you know, the the positives, the, the great people, the you know, the great community that's Wrexham and everything going on in the town. So um, it's not there to stitch anyone up. But of course, yeah, you're yeah. still wary that the cameras are there, but it's, you know, it's not really... You, not going to you well. you, you've talked about not getting in trouble. I think you had got in trouble, haven't you, with Ryan Reynolds with you walking out the dressing room, no top on, meeting Ryan's wife, Blake Lively. I mean, what are you, what are you putting out, Ollie? Come on, My you've got to dress top, up. Normally, most people do take their shirts off after <laughs> to have a shower. I just didn't put one back on when I when I saw them both. But that was quite funny. He messaged me after that. He was like, I'm so sorry because he obviously, Ryan being Ryan, he made a, he made a joke out of a, 
regular scenario in our lives and uh it went all around the world you know become pressing the sun all the way you know to the new york post to the people magazine <laughs> why i'm reynolds last Ollie Parman. he was like can people not take a joke they just they just spun this narrative on it and it was it was just a complete joke and uh the, yeah that that little news clip with a with a certain title went all around the world which was a bit weird but <laughs> one of those things i think now we just become accustomed to but yeah no he doesn't mind i don't think he minds anyway <laughs> Are they very different, the owners, as individuals and the way that they go about and, and, and the way they operate at the club, Ollie? As in the two people, Rob and Ryan, are they yeah. different? Yeah, you know, they are different. Um, they're both great. Um, you know, I think they've they've just both got very different lives as well. You know, I think um, obviously Ryan's um, creating his movies. Um, Rob's obviously doing um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. He's got his podcast, so their schedules are different. Um, but they're both great people, in you know, and they're, they're very similar in terms of the fact that they want to help everyone within within the changing room. You know, they want to help the community, they want to help the players, they want to help the staff, they want to provide support to us off the pitch as well. So they're different, of course, they're different people, but you know, they've got some very similar qualities, and you know, they're both very genuine and down to earth, which I think ultimately is the main thing. Yeah, and, and obviously talking about helping you, that they've obviously helped you as well with your clothing range. Yeah, they have, to be honest. They've been amazing, you know. Um, they spoke about, you know, they, they understand that we, we're lower league players and we're going to, you know, we're going to need to have careers after football. Unfortunately, no one uh, at our level will be putting their feet up and uh, after they finish playing football. And, you know, I set up a clothing range, WXM Clothing, and, you know, there's, they've shown me unbelievable support. Um, you know, they both wear my clothes. They've both given me um, invaluable business experience. So, yeah, it's, it's helped a lot because, you know, in the last year I've I've had over three and a half, nearly 4,000 orders, you know, mm. which has actually been a good problem to have as a startup <laughs> business. Great, yeah. <laughs> We've had to learn to run pretty quickly, but you know, yeah, it's great. It's it's been great to have you know two people like that to be able to pick their brains a little bit, and of Amazing. course, market the, the clothing brand. Yeah, absolutely. Fair play I, to I you wonder for that. if you've been helping them though with their geography. Did you see that map that's gone viral from the documentary? I did. Where did they put? Where do they put uh, Brentford in? Uh, Brentford, near enough, yeah, on the Scottish borders. Uh, yeah, and Everton were in Wales. Uh, Swansea and Cardiff in the <laughs> southwest of England. It was it was bizarre to say the least. <laughs> well, they've almost they've almost re, you know rejuvenated Wrexham. Maybe they're trying to just rejuvenate the whole of the UK and just relocate. Quite. Few different towns and cities. So. Indeed, indeed. Maybe you can help them with their geography, and likewise, they help you with your, your clothing range. Listen, Ollie, great to have you with us. Thank you. Nice one, Ollie. Thank well you. done. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant work. And Wrexham, by the way, up to fifth, back in yeah, the football league. Obviously, win. after a long time away, up to fifth. Then, and only it's only a, a, what goal difference that keeps them out of the automatic promotion spots yep. as things stand. Early days, of course, but going really, really well. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6am on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.